Hey, welcome back to the studio. Today I have a new and exciting Halloween seasonal project for you that's extra spooky and extra fun. So, um, remember a couple, you know, a couple videos ago I made sure you make eyeballs. Well, this, we're going to make a jar of eyeballs, a creepy jar of eyeballs for, I don't know, to put in our house. Because who doesn't want a jar of eyeballs in their house for Halloween? In addition to the eyeballs, I also have a pattern for creepy bugs, spiders, and centipedes. So these are, I've got three different size jars. We've got a large, a medium, and a small. And my intention is to display these kind of like you would jars, you know, your um, jars you put your flour and your different things, flour, sugar, and things like that on your countertop in your kitchen. Except these will be side by side and it'll be creepy stuff for Halloween decorations. So let's get started. What I've got so far, cut so far, is just a rectangle that matches this pattern. It's just clear for the base. I went ahead and cut the little pieces that would mimic the top of the jar. And for the very top, I thought, you know, the top of the jar of the lid might be like silver or gray. So I found this cool color. It's a blue and clear, steel blue, um, I don't know, what, like a spirit glass, I think. Spirit was the, the kind of the name of the pattern. And I went ahead and cut a piece of that out with the direction going vertically to go here on my jar. Now I'm gonna to wanna to cut a second layer here, and I thought, ooh, wouldn't this make a cool material for the inside of the jar so that it would look like the eyes are floating in this creepy red liquid? Looks like blood. Yes, yeah, so I love it. So the fun part is to decide which way this should go. How do we want our blood flowing yeah, on this project? So the cool thing when you have, you know, a glass like this with a really neat pattern is you can work with that pattern Oh, look at that rich color there. Oh my goodness. You can work with that pattern and those colors to enhance your artwork and make it more fun. So love working with glass like this where the, there's a drastic variation of color and pattern throughout the sheet. This is a Fuser's Reserve. It was made back in 2012, if you can believe that. And this just happens to be the perfect opportunity to use it. So I've had this on the shelf obviously quite a while and just now found an opportunity to use this piece of glass and get some real excitement out. Now if I do this, see how I've got a little darker here? If I do that on the bottom of the jar, it's going to look like there's more depth in the jar. I think I like that idea. So I'm going to cut the glass this way. I'm going to take my ruler right here. I'm going to measure the dimension here, which is five. So I'm going to do this, this project. I'm going to do part of it by hand, cutting by hand, part of it using the Morton system. So the cool thing about this project is it's fast because uh, I already made the eyeballs a couple of weeks ago and some of the project I'm going to just cut based on the pattern, use a strip cutter to make stuff really accurate and cut it fast. And then the other stuff I'll detail on the grinder or with my handheld cutter. So the dimension was, let's double check and make sure we got that accurately, five inches. So I'm going to make a five inch, cut a five inch piece here with my strip cutter. Oh, look at this. And I'm going to break that away. Very nice. And now I was gonna do cut the whole thing. Look how, how awesome that is, that coloration there. I was thinking about doing it all the way to the top, but then I saw a picture the other day that I thought was kind of cool, and maybe I would do uh, something like that, or maybe I don't like that. Maybe I would do the lid kind of like that. Or so it's not so the liquid doesn't come all the way to the top. So let's go ahead and cut that. Now that we're going to cut by hand. Let me take it over here. Use my cutter. Now that's a pretty gradual curve, so I can do it in one step. There we go. Look how fun that is. All right, now because I want two full layers of glass, I want to put a piece of clear here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece of glass, a five-inch wide piece, out of this. And so by working with two full layers of glass, you ensure that your project is really strong and durable. So I'm going to place this here. I'll put this piece on top of it. And I'm going to use this, this, sec, this red piece of glass as a pattern to cut the clear one underneath. I'll take my Sharpie, outline across here, and then look. Oh, let's double check that that was accurate there. 
It might have moved on me a little bit. No, that looks pretty darn good. Okay, so I'm using this piece of glass as a pattern to cut this second piece of white. I'm sorry, the second piece of clear. You know, always would kind of um, frustrate me a little when students would call clear white. And here I'm doing the same thing. Okay, now that one's a little complicated, so I'll do that on two sides. Let's see how this fits. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, we're going for it. All right, now we need another piece of clear for this little spot right here. Let's see if that fits. Oh, it fits. It does fit. So that's beautiful. So now we have two, two full layers. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take these eyeballs that we made. Isn't that fun, right? And I'm just going to put them on top of the jar like they're floating in there. And remember, we want to work in odd numbers, so maybe we just do three eyeballs, even though we have a bunch more. Maybe we just do three. I kind of like the way that looks. So I'm varying, I'm deviating from the pattern a little bit. You know, just kind of coming up with my a little bit of my own design. I could round out these corners, but I think when I fire it, they're going to round out themselves. All right, so let's move on to the centipedes, because that one's easy. So the centipedes, we've got the clear base. We have the little piece that fits on above the lid. Got the clear here. A uh, second piece to sit there. And then our little pattern. Now, I'm going to try to use the same piece of glass that I already did for a cutoff, so I can save the, this big one for a different project down the road. So I'm going to try to work with this, even though I, for the large jar, I picked the absolute best piece that I really liked. Now this one, ooh, that's kind of fun. But maybe I want to use that for this one. I'm not really, I don't really care for the way that falls on the artwork. That's, that's very fun right there. This could be, ooh, I could do that. No, that won't work because it doesn't fit. All right, let's see. Do I want to do this? I want to do this. Ooh, it's so bloody. All right, let's, it's a bloody, beautiful piece of glass. I do that. I don't know that I like that. Let's try that. No, nope, I don't think I like that. Let's try this. Ooh, that's kind of fun. It looks like the, the liquid is seeping in there. And let's see. Let's check out what this dimension is. Four inches. And look, if we do it this way, the leftover piece of glass is enough to do this project. So I think that's what we should do. So sometimes I go directly for the color. Then sometimes I kind of work around the material so I get the most out of the glass. So I'm going to cut a three inch piece off of there. I'm going to rotate this around. Here we go. Cut that off. And look how beautifully that sits on there. Isn't that nice? Now we're going to draw our line for our, you know, the top of the jar. This one maybe we'll do a little bit like that, a little less of a curve. Cut that off. Sharpie's a great tool for working with glass because it stays on when you're working and cutting, but it washes right off with the grinder. All right, now we're going to go ahead and place this. Uh, let's do it this way. We'll place that there. I'm going to go ahead and cut a straight edge on here because I think it'll make it faster and easier to complete this project. All right, so I'm placing this on the top edge of the clear. Placing this below, and now we're going to do use this as a guide to mark it. And I can mark here. Oop, there we go. And sometimes it gets a little confusing as to which is which piece is the one that you actually want. So sometimes I put an X on the piece of glass, like here. You know, do I want this one or this one? You know, you, when you're working on your pattern, it's really obvious. But sometimes when you get away from your pattern and you don't have you know actual paper to go by that's numbered. That is a little easier. There we go. Look how beautiful that is. And then we take our other little pieces and stack them on top. Woo! Loving the way that's coming out. All right. So we got that one done. Now let's take this one. And oops, let's put the clear down first. That's fun, right? Let's try it this way. That's fun. Let's try it this way. Maybe this way. Ooh, I think I like that best. Yes? Do we agree? Yes. Okay. So let's find out the dimension on this one is four inches. So I'm going to have to rotate it this way because my increments are over here. Now, luckily, this glass is smooth on both sides, so I can turn it over and cut on either side. If you have glass with a texture on it, you want to cut on the smoother side because you'll get a better cut. Now, I really like that, but 
I also, oh, let's try it like that. Did that the way we had it? Or no, mm -hmm. we, we had it, no, we had it like this, right? Correct. Okay, so, but I love that coloring. So what I'm gonna do is cut something as close to this edge as I can, like that. That got a little deep there, like a little gra more gradual there. I just love creating this way where you just come out here and you have a bit of a plan, but not too much of a plan. All right. And look at the mess I got going on over here with this table. Okay, so uh, this is a little long, that's okay. I'm gonna tuck this here, place this here to determine how much clear I want. I think that looks pretty good. I'm lining up this edge and this edge with the clear. Take my Sharpie, cut that piece, and then mark this right there. Oh, this is so fun. Let's go ahead and cut this. Now this is just scrap glass I had in the bin. So this is a great reason to hold on to some of that clear that you have. It comes in handy for this type of thing. Oh, I'm glad that worked because that was kind of narrow and curvy in one area. Let's try that, put this here. Now you notice the Sharpie line? I'm gonna wash that off before I load this in the kiln for sure. Okay, I am like I like the way that, that fits there. All right, now down here, this is a little bit long, so I'm gonna mark it with a Sharpie, bring it over here. And the advantage to using the strip cutter is you get more accurate cuts, and you can cut more quickly. Get right to the fun stuff. The heck with all that. You know, sometimes pattern cutting is great. Sometimes, you know, just being spontaneous is great. All right, let's try putting these little lids on here. Love it, love it, love it. All right, let's work on these cool little um, centipedes. I have this awesome dichroic fire stick. Do you see how beautiful that is? Well, I'm just gonna use this for my bugs. So I'm gonna kind of place it there. Let's see if the other end might work better for me. Or maybe if I do this, let's see. Oh, that, that works right there, okay. So I'm just gonna cut it right here. Oh, look at that, popped right off for me. Ooh, is that a great little bug? Let's see, do we want to go the other way? I think so. Although that little rounded edge, that eh, doesn't really matter, that's fine. Uh, and then let's put a bug over here. All right, I like the idea of having this extra little crook in there, so that's why I'm cutting to the back of that. There we are. And then this guy's trying to crawl right out of the jar. Ooh, and I really love, right, it's hanging out up here, let's see. I really love the coloring of that purple. So I'm gonna try to include that. There we go, fun stuff, right? All right, now for the legs. So we're gonna take these black stringers and I'm just gonna put them across. Let's see, kind of make them about a half inch wide. I'm gonna take this away and I'm just gonna put a bunch of little stringers here. Oh, that one got a little long. Let's go ahead and make that one a little smaller. Now, if I do it by hand, it's going to kind of want to pinch me. So I'm going to just take my pliers and nip that a little shorter. And we want these to stick out on either side of the, the dichroic so that uh, they look like legs. All right, now I'm going to take uh, right here. Here we go. So this is hairspray in a little tiny applicator bottle with a little tiny tip. And when you drop it on, it gives you just a itty bitty amount of glue that, encourages the pieces to stay still while you move it to the kiln. And we're gonna let that dry for a second. Let's just double check that this is gonna fit, oh, place on there, fit on there. Look how cool that's gonna be, those little legs, right? Okay, we're gonna give that a minute to cure before we do any more. I'm gonna move this one off, cut some more little legs. All right, so we've got two rows of legs going here. Now I'm gonna take this third bug off, bug body off, make some legs for this one. There we are. Now you could use a different color background. You could use different color legs if you wanted to. Oops, that one wanted to jump away. Uh, this one's a little long, so I'm gonna turn it with my pliers. You could use different color legs. You could use a different color background. Uh, Nikki suggested the red. I was thinking about a green or a yellow, like an amber color, but I like the red. It, and I, what I really like about the red is the movement. 
and because it looks, you know, uh, I like the idea that some of the glass has a deeper color than the rest, which makes it look like it's a little more interesting. I'm gonna drop some glue on these. Remember, this is liquid hairspray. You buy the inexpensive brand, then you buy these little applicator bottles, put in there, and it works terrific because you don't have to pick up the glass, put glue on the back. You don't have to worry about the glass moving. It dries quickly. It burns off without leaving any trace. So that's all terrific. All right, now I'm going to take, and look at this, guys. Woohoo! Pliers handy. Pliers handy. We are learning, all right? I'm going to take these pliers and put this little bug body on top. Whoa. Awesome. All right, one leg is uh, uh, crippled here. All right, let's move that leg. Uh-oh. Oh, oh ah, we're moving legs over here, too. We're not supposed to be moving legs over here. All right, well, we might need an assist from a, pe a stringer. All right, this one leg is not in the right spot. There we go. Okay. There. Ooh. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, now these legs. Oh, boy, this is a little trickier than I anticipated. There we go. Okay, we're going to... All right, so he's got longer legs on one side than the other. That's okay. We That's fine. Over here, let's take this body. All right, this one obviously moved. Oh, come on now. All right. There we go. Got a body there. And now, oh, let's see, got a body here. Fun stuff, right? Okay, so they got creepy little crazy legs going everywhere. That's all right. It's our creepy little centipede with legs going everywhere. All right, I like that. I think it's pretty cool. All right, so we've got eyeballs. Uh, let's go ahead and make some spider bodies. Uh, I have a piece of dichroic, but I lost it. I know where it is. It's in the bucket. So when you buy your dichroic, sometimes it has a label on it. Well, you don't want to use a razor blade or anything else to get that, that label off. You want to soak it in the bucket. You put it in a bucket of water like this over here. And so you've got a bucket of water. You soak it for a minute, and the label comes right off without damaging the coating. Isn't that a cool little trick? And guess what? I do have a towel handy. You know why I have all this stuff handy? Because I haven't tidied up my studio between videos. I just came out here. We're just working on a, the cleanest corner we could find, and uh, here we go. All right, so these spider bodies are little circles. I've got this cool dichroic. It's black with silver pattern on it. And I'm just going to try to pick up some of this pattern for these bodies. So we've got one, two, three, four, five spiders. Let's find my cutter. I like this side because it has more pattern to it. I'm going to cut some squares. All right. There we go. We've got three bodies. Maybe we could use that one for a head. And then we'll cut some more. Let's see, I think I like this section right here because it has more pattern. So you can see how precise I'm being here on cutting these and how accurate and all that. You know, sometimes when you're doing stuff that's just seasonal and for fun, just have a good time with it. You know, don't stress over, uh, you know, getting everything just right. Just have fun. All right, so I'm going to take these little bodies. I'm going to take my grosers and just kind of nip the corners off, which makes them kind of oval and rounded and that gives them a bit of a rounded shape so they're not so square and then we'll put that right there see isn't that nice and of course since this is dichroic we're probably going to want to keep these little scraps that are on the table and put those in a bucket to save for another project all right there we go see how nicely that came out that nice shape put a little body there yeah that one goes this way Ooh, i like this pattern for these bodies all right look at this one isn't that cool Very fun pattern. I like that. I put that one there. Now, you know what? These spiders don't all have to be the same dichroic. I could certainly use different colors. And that might even be a whole lot more fun. But this is what I happen to have at the table right now. So let's go ahead and just keep moving forward with these. This is a, I don't know what kind of spiders these are. But um, what we like about these spiders is that uh, they stay put. We don't have to worry about them crawling on us or finding them you know, on the floor, on the corners or anything. They're just going to stay right on this jar where they're supposed to. All right, we've got another body there. That one came out a little bit square. I'm going to go trim that up a little bit more. There we go. Got another little body right there. All right, now we're going to use this part uh, for the heads. Actually, I'm going to go get another dichroic. We're going to use a different color. 
Let's shake this up a little bit. Ooh, or what would happen if we use this for the heads? I don't know. No, maybe not. Probably not. No, I don't think that's going to work. Okay, I'm going to go grab another color, and then we'll come right back. All right, so after I cut this glass, I went over to this, this bin where I have all this beautiful dichroic, all these big pieces and stuff, and I thought to myself, you know what? I like the idea of the spiders each being a different color uh, and not having the head or the body match. So I'm going to do a little design variation here. And um, they, they were fast enough to cut. Oh, look at that. That's a spectacular spider. Let's see what else I have in here. That one is pretty also. It's a solid. I want a lot of pattern because, gosh, we just keep using it up. Oh, there's a pretty one. Okay, so suppose we use some of these others. There we go. That was a pretty one also. All right, so I'm going to use some of these patterns to make the bodies, because I think that's a little more spectacular. I mean, these are so great. And you know, these will keep these spiders for something else, or we'll make, I don't know, make chiclets out of them or something. Okay, so I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna cut it into a little bit of a circle. And now we've got kind of a mess going on here. This one might end up being a little bit bigger, but that's okay. That's all right, I'm gonna work right here. Okay, so I'm gonna take this triangle, kind of round it out, Take my pliers, pull this excess material off. There we go. And now I've got this crazy little shape. I kind of nip it, make it kind of a round or oval shape. So the, the cool thing about the grozers is, you know, they've got these teeth on the top and on the bottom. There's a curve on the bottom and a flat spot on the top. And you can actually just grab your glass on the edge and kind of do this, a down and out motion, and shape that glass without having to use the grinder. The advantage to that with dichroic is the grinder tends to, um, oh look, that's a little bigger than we wanted, but that's okay, we're going for it. Uh, the advantage of doing this over grinding is that uh, when you grind, it chips the edge, it chips the coating, and it's obvious in your art that it's been chipped and ground, so I don't really like that. So I prefer just using the grozers to get the shape that I want. Now this is going to be a little bit of a rough kind of head, but so what? There we go. Oh look, I actually think that's better. Look, he's got a little bit of a shape to him. So I like that. Let's go ahead and make another spider out of this one right here. All right, so I was super uh, terrific with having things ready with some stuff, but what I do not have right now is the bench brush. So that's all right. I'm going to take this off here. There we are. Okay, so I'm sort of making a bit of a round. I started with kind of a square. Now I'm going to rose it to make something that's a little bit of an oval, rounded shape, a little rough. Okay, but look at that beautiful color. All right, so look at this beautiful color. It's got gold and blue and um, green, a little bit of pop pink. And I really love it. All right, so we're going to take this, and it, right here it kind of blends in with the background color. So I think I'm going to use this one up here where it kind of bridges outside of the red so we get to see a little more of that color. So that guy needs a head now. That sounds silly, right? Take some of this stuff out of context and it really sounds pretty funny. Now that guy needs a head. You know, you'd think everybody would have a head. Well, he will have a head in a second. All right, so this one, I'm going to take this little triangular piece and nipping it and just do kind of a rough job with it. And I'll place that up here. There. Ooh, see, he's like a... A different kind of spider altogether, but that's fun, right? All right, now let's take uh, this blue, this pretty blue one. We'll make a spider out of that. Matter of fact, we could take this piece right here because it's very close to the size that we want. And we'll cut it, make a bit of a rectangle. We take that rectangle and kind of just nip the edges. This is the spontaneous construction day here in the studio where we just have fun. Now, I will warn you that doing this, if you do a lot of this, it does tend to sometimes get you, you know, get your finger. See, it got me a little bit right there. I'm not even going to show you because it's so teeny tiny. Now, that's a little, probably a little too big. But, uh, you know what? I'm going for it. And look at this. This is a leftover from that one. I think that would make a terrific head for this guy. Maybe he's like a, um, I don't know, a pointy nose spider. Who knows? Let's go ahead and trim that up a little bit. 
Um, you know, my family, we've always been big fans of Halloween because, uh, I don't know, we just like to decorate with fun stuff, you know, spooky fun stuff. And um, so putting a little extra time into making these things is just delightful. I couldn't wait for October to come. I, I have to tell you, I love October. Couldn't wait for it to come so we could make some of these spiders. I think that guy's a little fat. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. He's uh, big boned, as my mother would say. So we're going to trim him down a little bit. Look how easy that is for him to diet. Wow. All he needs is a pair of grosers. And look at that. He's trimmed up. All right. So maybe it's all the exercise he got climbing up this jar. All right. I love that. All right. This one is so pretty. Let's do a purple one. Yes. All right. We'll trim this off here. So we have kind of a square, rounded square, rough square, whatever you want to call that. Trim this. Now the spiders are going to take you the longest of anything. Well, I guess the eyeballs are a two-step. But, uh, you know, just have fun with it. You know, you could also use, um, you know, fusible nuggets. You could also glue little spider bodies on later. You don't have to do them in advance if you wanted to. And let's see, should we give them a different color head? Like a green head on a purple spider? Yeah, let's do it. He's got a purple spider, but he's going to have a green head. This little piece here, that'll be his head. Okay, okay, go ahead and trim this up a little bit. Round it out. Oh, it's getting hard to hold. Let's see how that looks. Nice. <laughs> Very fun. All right, so this last spider, uh, that one, that one. Is one of the ones you made already. One of these? Okay. Yeah. Good idea. Which one do we like? This one? Or this one, or this one. Yes, right? Which one? That one? That one. Okay, Nikki says we're going to use this one right there. All right, and we'll give him a colorful head. Yes, oh, yes, is that all right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to grind or grow this up a little bit. Okay, Ooh, doesn't want to let me. And I'm going to hold it with these pliers. Uh oh. Right, there it is, okay. All right, let's try the little, his head on there. All right, that looks awesome. All right, loving that. Okay, now the legs on, on my designer are curved. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna put little legs kind of coming off the outside of the body. So the first thing I'm gonna do, well now one thing I could do is remove the body and just do legs straight across. Let's try that method, see if we like it. So got there, got those. And then maybe these last two we do like this. Right? Okay. And let's do these kind of like that. And let's try the body on top and see what we think. <laughs> well, that's all right, right? Or do we want to stick in out all directions? What do you think? What do we think? What do we think? All right, how about we do this? How about we make the bottom one and the top one stick out in different directions? And leave those like that. So he's like that. All right, where are those darn tweezers? Here they are. Okay, so let's move this over. This in. There, I think that's pretty good. This leg maybe could be a little shorter. Right over here. All right, I like that. All right, move this in a little bit. Oh, hello. Okay, and then where'd the head go? Here it is. Okay, that's cool. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and glue that down. There we are. A little bit of glue on there, perfect. All right, so this isn't rocket science. All right, we're gonna put legs on the rest of the spiders and then we're gonna uh, move these into the gum. But first, let's go back to the eyeballs. Nikki had a suggestion that we, uh, we have these three big eyeballs because we want to work in odd numbers. But we, the other day we made a whole kiln shelf, small kiln shelf of eyes. And she was kind of playing around with maybe introducing some of these other eyes, different sizes, um, you know, to this jar. And I think it's a great idea. So let's add those and stagger them a little bit. Maybe some of these little ones. Ooh, look, so it's like a jar of, of all different kinds of eyeballs. And maybe we'll put another one, put one of these in there over here. 
And look how fun that is, right? So let's, we want to do like an, uh, you know, a zigzag pattern with our details. This eyeball's looking down, this one's looking up, maybe this one's looking out. Oh, did you see that? Look. Hmm. <laughs> Having too much fun out here. That one's going to bob to the top. Uh, so, all right, I think we're going to call that done. Okay, so we're going to add more legs to the spiders. And we're going to take these projects, we're going to put them in the kiln, on a kiln shelf, prime kiln shelf, and we're going to fire them to a full fuse temperature. Then we're going to bring it back and show you what they look like. Hi, welcome back to the studio. So last, overnight, we fired the three jars of spookiness. And what we did this time was attack temperature. Let's open the kiln and see what we have. Oh boy, check this out. All right, so we've got a jar of spooky eyeballs, and we have a jar of spiders, and a jar of bugs with creepy little legs and antenna. How fun is this? Ooh, love it. Love it. All right, so let's take these out. Oh, look how fun that is. Right? Oh, and I love that background color. It gives it a nice sense of pattern direction. You know, at one point I considered doing the red straight. And then I just decided, well, let me make it look like it's wavy and turbulent. And I like it. I think it's another kind of cool aspect to this piece. So I'm noticing as I'm touching it, there's a couple little sharp spots here in the corners. Remember, these were perfectly square when we started. And they rounded out in the firing, in the full fuse firing. So very cool. Kind of saved us a step. You know, I was planning on grinding those to match the pattern. But it looks like as long as you're going to a full fuse, you don't have to. Now, maybe it's not as rounded as it would have been if I did grind it to match the pattern. But I feel like that's plenty of curve to give us the look we want, that it's kind of a nice rounded edge. So I really love it. This is fun. You know, that gray color up there. I love that. All right, right here in my little handy drawer, I have this thing called a sickle stone. It's basically a file for glass. I'm just going to take it to the back side and wipe it on that sharp spot. Now that sharp spot may be consistent with the fact that I didn't grind those. And that glass pulled in a little bit. And that movement on the shelf created a little sharp spot. So that's all it needs. Itty bitty tiny touch up, and now it's not sharp to your fingers. It's easy to hold and handle. Right here is a little bit more right there. And there we go. So when you use a sickle stone, you don't want to use it this way or this way. You want to use it this way on that bottom edge. And then you're not disturbing or changing the edge quality of the rest of the project. So we're going to take this one and place it over here on the table. Let's go ahead and pull another one out. And here's our little spider jar, a jar of spiders. Look at those pretty little dichroic dudes kind of climbing all over that jar. Let's see. Oh, this one's got a little sharp spot here, here, and here. So go ahead and take that sickle stone. Well, before we do that, like, let's check out that pattern. Isn't that pretty? The direction we've got going on here is really fun. And you've got one, two, three, four, five spiders because we want to work at odd numbers design-wise. Uh, I like the way that we have a little movement here on the top of that medium or uh, turbulent material inside the jar. Maybe it's blood. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's oil or maybe it's syrup or oh, who knows what it is. But anyway, we're gonna, there's a little sharp spot here. I'm going to take my file, my sickle stone, go over that a little bit. Go here and here. Yep. Just give that a little bit of a touch up. And that's all it needs. Just enough so that when your hand runs across, it doesn't feel like it's going to snag or pinch or uh, cut you or anything. So, do a little touch up there. Loving the way this one came out also. Hold it like that so you can see the the beautiful colors there. Isn't that fun? All right, we're going to place that over here. Let's take this third one out. Look at the one with the bugs, the centipedes. Look how fun those are. And look at the coloring here. We've got a really deep color kind of moving up, maybe moving with those centipedes. Now, if you think about it, you know, maybe the bugs should have been behind all this or between layers. The reason I didn't do that was because if the bugs are behind the red, it would change the color. I wouldn't have these beautiful, bright colors. And in the photograph and sitting on my counter or wherever you're going to display these, having them up front makes them uh, jump out of the art. So they're really beautiful and you really see them. If they had been on the back side, they would have been hidden by this red coloring. And if I put them in between layers, it would have created bubbles, which would have ruined the illusion that they were inside the jar. So that's why I decided to put them on top. Even though technically they're supposed to be in the jar, maybe the bugs and the spiders are on the outside of the jar, the eyeballs really technically should be in theory, are inside the jar, but changed up our, you know, the assembly a little bit to make sure that we ended up with a project that looks good, displays well, and achieves the design results that I was looking for. 
So I'm really pleased with that and the way it came out. And at the last minute, I changed up the two, these two. All three of the um, little guys were this color ori originally. I thought, well, that's pretty, but they were kind of getting absorbed by the red coloring in the background. So I decided to change those and do two different colors. And I'm glad I did because this color really jumps off of that red. And the blue is fun because it kind of picks up, you know, a color in between those two. All right, this one doesn't feel like it needs maybe a little touch up on this one corner with the sickle stone. There you go, and that's it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is take these over to the grinder. I made these bases to support the glass so it'll sit on the countertop. But what I want to do is grind this bottom edge, make it flat, and also give it some texture. Making it flat gives the glue more surface area to stick to, and giving it texture gives the glue a, a better adhesion to this piece, which gives a better contact to the base, which makes it stronger when it's on the countertop. And, and this is the kind of project that's likely we're going to put away in store for the year and then bring it back out seasonally. So we want it to be as durable and sturdy as possible. So let's head on over to the grinder. All right, I'm over here at the grinder. Uh, before you grind, you want to make sure this is a little bit thicker glass than single layer. It's two layers of glass. You want to make sure that your grinder bit, the grinding surface is high enough to grind that whole edge. So you may want to raise that up a little bit. Also, when you turn your machine on, you want to make sure there's plenty of water around that bit. Lots of water it makes the bit last longer. It makes a better grind, smoother grind on the glass, putting less chipping in the glass, gives you a better edge quality. So you want to make sure, and it also keeps the dust down. All those things are very important when you're doing grinding, cutting, any type of uh, work where you're cutting through the glass. So we're going to go ahead and turn this on and grind that edge. See that uh, that nice straight here? I'll put it turn this way. See how that just kind of square, and now it's kind of flat. When we dry it off, you'll get to see that kind of ground uh, aspect to it. All right, let's see if it looks like it's nice and straight. It's probably not going to stand up on its own because it's top heavy. Oh, look at that. Okay, so we've got a good grind if it's standing up on its own. It means it's nice and straight, nice and flat. That's terrific. Okay, we're going to call that one done. Let me grab a towel right here, dry it off. And I'm going to go ahead and grind the other ones. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. All right, take this one off the grinder. Little bugs, little spiders. Hello, little spiders. <laughs> pretty soft so it grinds pretty easily look at that nice square edge we have there let's see if this one will stand up by itself no not not quite let's give it a little more of a grind all right check that out now it doesn't have to stand by itself to be a good grind all you want is a relatively straight edge, but you know, if it stands up, it's kind of fun to see that it does that, but it's not absolutely necessary. All you want to do is make sure that you have, take off a, kind of an even amount of material, don't push too hard in one spot to create an indentation, and make sure you get a really nice edge. So see how, how much different that edge is compared to this one now. See how square that is? I hold it this way. I don't know how to hold it where you can see it best, but you can see that this is flat and that's not. And this has, um, you know, a texture to it, and this is smooth. So that texture is going to help the glue adhere better. So let's put this one over here. And we'll grind this last one. All right, so this one, I'm noticing the bottom edge has a little concave shape to it, and that's probably because these two pieces sort of come close to the edge. So I'm going to have to grind a little more on either end than I do in the middle. So let's go ahead and get to that. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, that's looking pretty good. Maybe it's a little high there. I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and just try it. Okay. It feels like look. It feels like there's a little bit of a wobble there. So maybe I ground too much on the ends. I'm grind a little more in the middle. <laughs> And once you get it ground, you can't overdo it. So best, in this type of situation, best to do a little grinding, test. Do a little grinding, test it, do a little more grinding, and test. Okay, woo, we're calling it. Calling that one done too, Woohoo! nice. All right, you wanna make sure it's nice and dry. It takes a few minutes for that uh, abrased edge to dry. Look at the first one we did here. Can you see how it's, over here, from here to here, it's dry. From here to here, it's not. So you want that nice, even, abrased edge dry before you go ahead and glue this onto your base. And I'm looking at this, and I'm saying, whoa, there's a little bump right there. But hey, it stood up, right? So do we want to worry about the little bump? Well, it doesn't want to stand up now. Okay, it stands up. We're calling it good. Okay. All right, so let's come on over here. Take these pieces, bring our towel. Where do you want to go, Nick? Over that way side. Oh, we're going to go on this side. Come on over here. Right, so we have our bases. All right, here the, so here's the base for this one. Piece, two pieces of clear fused together. That's going to go on there. All right, and then here's the base for this medium size one. So I cut bases that are the same length as the pieces of art, and then I made each one of these a little narrower than the other. So they're a little bit, uh, so that way they're obvious, but they're not, you know, they add to the art, but don't distract from it. So I don't want anything too, too big. All right, we're gonna find, need to find something to prop these up while the glue dries. So oftentimes I will use, uh, let's see, we have this little standoff thing here, so I'm not sure what, maybe I need something on either side to hold it up. So let's see. All right, I have an idea, but I'm gonna have to go dig something off the shelf. I'll be right back. All right, so this is a little tabletop easel that you would use maybe to uh, put a canvas on to paint. And I, in my, when there's sometimes I put signs on it. Some people come to my studio like, welcome to the studio or whatever. Anyway, it comes in really handy for a variety of different things. Today it's gonna come in really handy to help us support these pieces of art while we glue the, um, the design to the base. So what I'm gonna do is put the base, line it up right here, put some glue on the bottom of this, use this to hold it vertically while the glue dries overnight. I'm gonna tape this to the stand with this masking tape and then allow the glue to dry overnight. So let's go ahead and put some glue on here. I'm going to use E6000, my uh, go-to glue for most things. I'm just going to run a bead along here. There we go. Place it on the base. Just kind of try to center it. And I'm also checking, you know, that it looks like it's um, straight with the base, there we go. Let's hold that there, oh, thank you, Nikki. Oh, perfect. Probably gonna need another piece over here. Let's go a little further and go right around the back. Okay, now, Nikki, look at it from this direction with the camera. Does it look straight up and down, or does this need to come forward a little? Oh, it looks pretty good. Okay, then we'll call it good. Okay, so let's go ahead and put some glue. Now look at this glue, it's oozing right out. It's ready to go, it's ready to go. This glue is on it. Add some more glue. There we go. Prop this one up. There we are. Now the smaller pieces tend to have less weight, so they tend to uh, prop and glue a little more easily. But we still wanna make sure you know that it doesn't go anywhere, so I'm still going to add a little piece of tape to it. 
There we go. I straighten it up. Okay, Nick, what do you think? Does it look square? Does it look straight up and down? Uh, looks like it's leaning forward at the top a little bit. How's yeah. that? Better? There. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you've got a little bit of adjustment there. Cool. And don't worry about if any of the glue, you know, comes out on the front or the back a little bit. We can clean it up with a razor blade later. Right now, the idea is just to get a nice amount of glue on there to hold these pieces securely uh, once they're affixed to this base. There we go. Okay. How does that one look? Uh, it's leaning back a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put some tape on it. And then, so we want to do something like that. Yeah. Good? Yeah. All right, well, thank you guys for helping me with that. Does it still look okay? Yeah. All right, terrific. Okay, so we used E6000 glue adhesive. It goes on, it's like a honey consistency. It's a little messy to work with. But we're going to let these dry overnight and then uh, we'll clean up any excess glue that came out and then we'll show you what they look like uh, probably after they've dried. Hi, welcome back to the studio. Oh my goodness. So we have completed our spooky eyeballs, our spooky spiders, and our spooky bugs, and our jars of terror. Okay, maybe they're not jars of terror, they're jars of super funness. Oh my gosh, these were so fun to make. So you saw me, I you know, create, cut the glass, we cut the pieces, we fired to a full fuse, and we fired to a tack fuse so that we have some texture on these pieces. Really fun stuff, a lot of different uh, techniques we used here, and I'm really thrilled with the way they came out. I made little bases, I showed you how I glued those on. So, um, you know, I just love Halloween. We all love Halloween around here. And this may seem like a silly way to use material, a silly way to use my time, a silly way, you know, silly project to make, but boy, I had fun. So sometimes, you know, I do love making big, elaborate, really fine art pieces, but man, sometimes it's just so fun to get out in the studio and just be whimsical and have a good time making things that are just silly and fun. And you enjoy, enjoy having, enjoy sharing, enjoy having people come around and see them. So. Uh, this guy right here, it's um, about a five by six piece of glass with a base, nice clear base. We rounded that out by firing it, full fusing it. Then um, put the eyeballs on there. We decided at the last minute to add these other colored eyeballs, which I think look great, great, really thrilled with that. Then the spiders, they're all little dichroic spiders with little legs, and they're in this kind of murky, bloody, syrupy kind of water, which is fun. And then I've got three little bugs over here with lots of little legs crawling around. So, fun techniques, fun projects. You can make these different sizes. You can make them bigger, you can make them smaller. Very manageable for any size kiln. You know, if you don't have this cool red, use something else. Maybe a blue, maybe a, a white and clear or something. Just something that has a little bit of movement to it will really add a lot to these projects. So, I had a terrific time making these and sharing these with you. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make these and you'll try some. And maybe, you know, since, uh, you know, there's something that's kind of seasonal, but heck, you could leave them out all year if you wanted to. Or uh, take this concept and do something different. Maybe do a jar of candy. Maybe do a jar of seashells or a jar of, um, you know, stones or a jar of butterflies, a jar of um, uh, maybe lightning bugs. So a lot of different options or different ways you could take, directions that you could take this concept. So, you know, this would be great for light lightning bugs in the spring or bumblebees, you know, bumblebees are always so popular, you know, and they're such a wonderful um, asset to nature and to life in general. So there you go, lots of options here. So take the jar option and run with it, go in your own direction. So I had a wonderful time making these and sharing them with you. I hope you enjoyed seeing how to make them. Uh, please like, subscribe, follow, and share. We would love when you do that and send your comments. We love your comments, really enjoy getting those and all the positive feedback we're getting. Thank you so much. And please consider becoming a member of my premium video membership. We would love to have you. We've got new memberships, new videos coming out all the time. Uh, got a new fall one coming out very soon. Got some great ideas for the upcoming seasons. And would really, really love to have you on board. And know that you're going to love these projects. So thanks again for joining me. And until next time, happy fusing.